I know what you're thinking. This is not a FNAF video, but this is about something monumentally important. It's about real life and about how Scott Cawthon snubbed us. It's also about why I now feel a part of a tribe. Since we stopped obsessing over FNAF, I've had more free time. The whole Treesicle team has. And with that time, we've been analyzing things, looking back on what happened. And that's when I realized Treesicle was the black sheep of the FNAF community. We, we even made some relevant merch. Thanks, Black Sheep. I'm Grant, by the way. Chances are you already know that I'm a part of a four-man YouTube channel called Treesicle. There's Ryan, my goofy counterpart, Tyler, the quiet writer slash editor, and Mike, a writer and editor who hosts shows on our anime channel Bonsai Pop. <laughs> For years, we've thrown our hat into the FNAF wrestling ring. We've tingled Freddy's dingle. We've penetrated Foxy's foxiness. And we've even exposed the purple man. And yet, with the release of FNAF Help Wanted, fellow YouTubers like Daco, MatPat, 8BitRyan, etc. all got early copies of the game. From the generous hand of Scott Cawthon, keys were sent through cyberspace to be played on virtual reality headsets. But not to us! What's the deal, Scott? Are we not rated G enough for you? Are we not stand-up members of the FNAF community? I, I think we all know the answer to those questions. Like I said, Teresicle was in a weird spot when it came to FNAF. A, a very weird spot. Everyone gets hate on the internet, but for us it was even more hatier. Not, not by you guys, you guys are great, most of you anyway. But there were certain sections of the Five Nights at Freddy's community that, well, they, they, they weren't really fans. See, since we've been done with FNAF, I've had more time to do soul searching. With that time, I've explored controversial used bookstores, where I found a very special book that will change the course of this channel's future. More on that later. Our ride on Fazbear's Super Peen has been defined by love, rage, and darkness that ultimately will lead to a transcendent spiritual destiny into the divine bosom of Scott Cawthon himself. So prepare yourself for the story of snubs, snoots, and serendipity which slipped through our fingertips. For the disapproval of those who loved a franchise for which our interest waned. For hate which poured from a thousand keyboards. This is the story of how Scott Cawthon and the die-hard FNAF head snubbed us. This is the story you never knew. It's true, Scott has collaborated with virtually every other YouTuber to cover FNAF except us. I'll dive deeper into that and that very important book momentarily, but first, a word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends! You think you know about mobile games? Ha! Raid is one of the most ambitious RPGs of 2019. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find in a mobile game, and it seriously looks like it was made for PC or console. With its addictive gameplay, awesome story, badass boss fights, and hundreds of champions for you to find and customize, it's no wonder I've been playing it for months now. Because along with all that, it's totally free and has a near-perfect score in the app store. Just check out how awesome these champions look. Raid is getting even better with a huge update this month, so if you haven't joined yet, now is the time. Just go to the description of this video and download Raid only through my link to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free epic champion. Courtesy of us here at Teresicle and of course the game devs. I've been enjoying the heck out of this game, so check it out with the link down below and you won't be disappointed. Back to it. Back to Treesicle's tale of FNAF. In this community, we were the black sheep, the lone wolves, the salmon who swam upstream. Unlike you lemmings who drown in it, a role we came to accept. We even made a shirt out of it. From Mike Schmidt, the store you never knew back in 2015, to Help Wanted, the store you never knew in 2019, we have fought the animatronic fight. And what did we get for it? A few million views? A chunk of change? Well, I'll tell you what we didn't get. 
acceptance. Diving into the topic of Scott's snub is fascinating to me. It brings up all sorts of questions that before I felt the need to stay silent about. Have you ever been curious how we got into Five Nights at Freddy's? I mentioned that Treesicle has always been in a weird spot when it came to the franchise. Now it's Time to elaborate. It was late 2014. Scott Cawthon had already splooged his brainchild into cyberspace, and people from all over the world were guzzling it up. Who is Phone Guy? What's the deal with Golden Freddy? How do I not poop my pants? The internet went ham. Oh boy, did it. We spent a lot of time as a team deciding if jumping into the FNAF pool with all the pee, pee from little kids was worth it. I was skeptical. Not because the game looked terrible, but because I was worried about a steroid shot to the channel. Maybe you've noticed, but Treesicle is tastefully disgusting, much like a pine-flavored popsicle would be. We like our bad words, our Nancy Reagan jokes, trolley humor, etc. Such a brand is a far cry from the squeaky clean franchise that is Five Nights at Freddy's. Maybe you remember Scott's original games, the ones he made before he made FNAF. He was a purely Christian game dev. Everything he made was based off or inspired by the Bible. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But our channel doesn't exactly fit into line with the kind of audience who listens to gospel rock. At least not the kind that's like really, really into gospel rock. And in the same way, we've never melded well into the FNAF community. Just look at the people who thrive there. Smike was so pure he couldn't afford a comb. Daco is flawless. Razbowski is Razbowski. 8-Bit Ryan's edgiest jokes all involve farts, and until his treesicle reaction video states otherwise, MatPat definitely only likes missionary. And yet, here we were among them. A gaggle of stoner edgelords with a thriving YouTube channel. Well, minus Mike, he's not a stoner, he just… he has a Sanic tattoo. FNAF was a bucket filled with money and eyeballs, and for months I refused to reach our hand into it until one day… Fuck it. In March of 2015, Mike Schmidt, the story you never knew, made its debut. I yelled about Olive Garden sucking, and we used Mike Schmidt, the baseball player, in place of the FNAF character. The video got views, and so we continued imbuing our best and brightest takes on Five Nights at Freddy's with F-bombs, sex jokes, and whatever else it is that we do. Some parents hated us because, well, a lot of kids like FNAF. And a lot of those kids watch FNAF videos that we now happen to be making. Indeed, Treesicle was poisonous chaos to the young developing minds of the internet. But who cares? When we covered it, it did well. So we covered it more. And more. And more. But as we started deeper and deeper into FNAF, our identity crisis began. In general, the Freddy audience was far younger than the ones we had garnered to begin with, and so we began to worry that our edgy jokes were too edgy. Or at least too smart, uh, name an 11 year old that would get a Nancy Reagan reference. I mean, come on, this is, this is high class stuff. We were worried that the videos we were putting out were for people that were older than the FNAF audience was. And in 2017, we got hit with a proverbial baseball bat to the head known as the Adpocalypse, which made reports from angry parents even more of a threat to our fart art. They fucked with our fart art! And because of this, we got worried about what we could say and what we couldn't. Our videos began to suffer. Questioning oneself and the direction of an artistic venture does not yield the best results. The crippling self-doubt just made me want to transcend this illusory existence and simply swim with the whales and dolphins in space. Me and the team didn't feel entirely welcome on this platform, and it made us feel a longing that only a properly spiritual path could quell. Our artistic juices were evaporating, and only a miracle of the highest caliber could rejuvenate them. You could limp along with your mind halfway out of it and still get your taxes done correctly, but art, like a script, isn't black and white. Because of this, on a channel where we constantly pushed ourselves to go the extra mile to get the deeper meaning and express it absurdly, we found that we weren't going above and beyond for our FNAF videos anymore. We would take a deep look at the game from a bunch of angles and come up with a good video, but we wouldn't do what we used to. We wouldn't watch hours upon hours of YouTube videos and play through games incessantly, absorbing as much as our minds could handle. We were rushing to get things done. Turns out Reddit noticed 
noticed and we were too busy to care about them noticing. I love you FNAF subreddit. I like to be punished. Ooh, this guy. He's like if Markiplier had a baby with MadPad and the baby fell down a flight of it's stairs tricycle. during his crucial development phase. I don't care if it's apparently good. Theory. It's Treesicle. Awesome. Tree I'm not really walking out of here. Treesicle tree tree most likely ignores us and stays to his own opinions that he's being solved or that way. Leave Tree alone! Treesicle is a shit theorist. Wait, theorist? When did Treesicle become a theory channel? Oh yeah, I, I guess our FNAF videos were theories, huh? Whoops, uh, th that was a mistake. We didn't get started on YouTube making theories about how long Captain Falcon's dong is by making pixel calculations. We can't do math that big. Our content has always been analytical interpretations of video games that climax at a point about life lessons. That's the wholesome version. FNAF changed that, and we won't be doing theories in the future either. But the hate was worth it, damn it! We were still making non-FNAF videos. Our self-expression was not not completely squelched. We interspersed the FNAF with other recent video game releases and old school games. But the problem was the animatronic Bonanza did so much better than our other videos that we got a crazy influx of subscribers specifically for FNAF. Because of that, topics outside of indie horror started to underperform. Meanwhile, our indie horror videos would get millions of views, netting us more subscribers for those specific videos. Destroying the fan base we'd created for the content we originally covered on this channel. When creepy animatronic speculations on the newest game get 500,000 views a pop versus an in-depth character analysis which spans multiple games and only gets 40,000 views, it puts us in a very weird spot creatively. It split our subscribers between indie horror superfans and older, far more cultured adults who wanted any game and Nancy Reagan jokes. The FNAF heads, in all their vigor outclicked our original fan base, making topics that once performed well on the channel do poorly in comparison. It pushed us to the point of releasing FNAF update videos, which weren't anything mind-blowing just because they knew they would get views and push us through the month so we could pay rent. Some of those things were still pretty funny though, I I'm gonna admit. Well, I'll come to your house and break your kneecaps. Meanwhile, we'd put 100 hours into something we cared about like Simon Belmont for 60,000 views in the first month, i.e. about $40 in each of our pockets for a week of work. It was depressing, but the Steakums and Natty Daddies that 40 bucks bought were good! <coughs> As the cycle continued, we started to resent Five Nights at Freddy's. A franchise whose lore started out quite interesting for us had taken a hold of our channel in such a way that we started feeling creatively stifled. At first, the mystery was cool. Scott's brainchild was a riddle to be solved, but then more games kept coming out. Characters and story became increasingly convoluted, and to make another reality-shattering FNAF script meant keeping an impossible jumble of information straight. Great. To be honest, every script required me and Tyler to virtually re-memorize all of the plot points and information. It was all so discombobulated that it didn't stay in our minds organically like normal stories do. This chipped away at our energy and creativity until we went from creating videos we were immensely proud of to videos that were just updates. For the lols, but also definitely for the views definitely for the views. We got called out on it, believe me. Even the dolphins and whales floating through a faraway nebula heard the criticisms. As part of the tribe, however, they forgave me. Forgave us. When we started this whole YouTube thing, our aim was to make the funniest, most ridiculous in-depth videos on games and characters that we could. But the grind and desire to succeed more than create sent us down a different path, where we lost sight of why we're on YouTube to begin with. This is why we're stopping with Five Nights at Freddy's videos. Because we need to take a step back on the channel and cover topics that let us ooze the same ridiculousness of years past. That same in-depthness expressed through intellectual trolliness that we used to have. It means we won't be able to release quite as many videos, and it might mean that we won't be able to fully support ourselves with this channel anymore. We might have to get other jobs and take this back to a side gig. But that's fine because Ryan looks good in a wig on the streets at night. Damn, girl.
I'm incredibly grateful that I'm even able to do YouTube at all, let alone being able to do it full time for three years. All four of us love making videos, and our five year journey on this channel took us to a spot where we lost sight of that because we were so focused on forcing this to financially succeed because Treesicle was our only source of livelihood. We have four people creatively running this engine, but we also have to pay four people, meaning we only take a quarter of what a solo YouTuber makes at this level. In 2019, with rising minimum wage, we could make more working at McDonald's. Thankfully, we have sponsors and patrons to help us make ends meet. Now, it's back to basics. Back to what we know we want to do. Make the very best videos we can on games, characters, news stories, whatever. Making stories you never knew that really live up to the name. We want to put our heart into each video that shows up on your feed, so each one can be something we're proud of. And I hope you stick along for the ride. Scott would probably agree. Even though FNAF involves children getting murdered, it's never explicitly shown in high resolution. The only semblance of violence is in 8-bit cutscenes. God only cares about high resolution gore, just like the government. FNAF garners a certain audience and a certain type of creator that covers it. We went over that. We've never fit that mold and we're tired of trying to force it. We aren't squeaky clean creators covering a children's horror game. We enjoy our raunchy and sarcastic views on the subjects we cover. That's why I'm not surprised Scott never threw us any bones. I don't blame him either. Once I realized that real life children were now asking their parents what a knowledge dildo was, I began to have a change of heart. Maybe Scott had good reason to snub us. Maybe we were filth on the otherwise splendid FNAF community. Maybe our theories were dumb. Maybe my voice was stupid. Maybe all I needed to do do now was enter a deep state of meditation and tune into the frequency on which the universe's most enlightened beings broadcast their thoughts. But as always, I needed the help of the Tree Skull team, because we are a team, part of the tribe. We're a group of lads bonded by friendship and legal business documentation. Ryan has always been a far and away optimist, the emotionally stable golden retriever who always expected to have a white picket fence and a nine to five and to come home to his wife every night to a house that smells like dinner and apple pie. And now he's married to his right hand and drinks SpaghettiOs for attention. Hey, sometimes I use my left. And for as much crap as we've given FNAF throughout this video, Optimist Ryan knows that it was a good thing. Speaking of which, I'm Ryan. I'm the Optimist. You may or may not know me, I've hosted some shows on Tree School, but big boy Grant over here is the host of The Story You Never Knew. When we started this channel with Tyler five years ago, I never would have expected to go full time. I'm the corporate kid, the white picket fence guy. Uh, now I just chuck SpaghettiOs for attention. But as the channel started to grow more and more, and it eventually got to the point where we were able to transition out of our real big boy jobs and into full-time YouTubers. It's been amazing. And I truly believe that this opportunity wouldn't have happened without Five Nights at Freddy's. We've been given opportunities that I would have never thought would have happened. But over the years of covering Five Nights at Freddy's updates and creating videos that we weren't 110% proud of, we lost a little creative something something along the way. Did we go overboard with it? Absolutely. Yeah, damn straight we did. Every video, it's spring trap this, glitch trap that. New information, up to his asshole. None of it makes any sense. It's not part of a story. It's just a bunch of fragmented bull that is impossible to keep straight. Like, there's always new characters. Ew, who the, who the heck is Theodore? Who? Ah, ah. Five Nights at Freddy's is a nail in my brain. But you know what? What? I still love and appreciate all of you. That's right. You who click subscribe for only FNAF, who stay awake at night worrying about nightmare animatronics and probably look at Foxy and Friends Rule 34. I have something to tell you. There's more to life than child murderers. There's more to life than moldy looking animatronics designed by a faceless man to scare you. And there are thousands of better games out there than FNAF. It's time for a new paradigm of things, a new way that leads us out of this place where I can no longer breathe. It's time for expansion.
It's time for the Galactic Tribe. <laughs> Whatever that book is, is doing something to your head. No, Ryan. Expansion. It's the way of things. Join me, Ryan, in a sitting meditation. Once in a trance, we will generate a psychic potential that will carry our minds beyond the limitations of time and space to the plane of ascended masters and golden gods. We were never meant to stay in FNAF forever. We're gonna join the tribe. The nature of existence is a constant stride towards higher consciousness and therefore towards the scale of the cosmos. The Galactic Tribe, the interconnected network of beings who live in and amongst the planets and stars. We have found our future amongst the whale songs. This is our path to enlightenment. This is our destiny in the wake of FNAF. We are escaping its clutches to join the tribe. And you too can join the tribe. So our way out is by joining the Galactic Tribe of dolphins and whales and golden gods and joining this tribe will take us on a path of enlightenment and out of five nights at freddy's join the tribe um all right grant i will join your tribe and together we can grow it okay um so is that the story you never knew not yet it's not with these changes, we want to give back to those who have joined the tribe. We'll be doing giveaways all across the internet. That includes our YouTube channel, Twitter, Instagram. So make sure to subscribe slash follow slash do all that cool social media stuff and turn on them notifications because you, you don't want to miss this. You don't, you don't want to miss any of this. Look at this. You can't, you can't get away from it. The prizes will be out of this world. Don't miss the giveaways. And. Thanks so much to our friends at Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Seriously, thank you so much. Check them out down below. The game is awesome and you're gonna love it. Cause without them, we couldn't keep the lights on. I mean, look, look how this looks with the lights off. It's really bad, isn't it? Horrible. It's so bad. I hate it. It's disgusting. I hate everything about this. Thanks for sponsoring us. Thank you. I can buy groceries now. Join the truck.